Okay, Cadwell bogey section, the mountain. A lot of people, me included, feel intimidated by the mountain. It's a little scary, even for an advanced rider. It challenges everyone's ability, and if you don't treat it with respect, it can bite. There's a lot to do and a lot going on, braking, changing direction, as well as wheeling and jumping, etc. However, breaking it down, it's in effect a left-right chicane with elevation changes. But like any chicane, there's always a compromise to one or both of the corners to gain the most out of the section as a whole. To help negotiate the mountain section, it can help to understand a little bit of what the bike's going through. Due to the huge elevation changes, suspension, tyres and chassis are having to put with an enormous amount of change. If you were to see the data, particularly from a suspension travel point of view, it would be very clear there's a lot going on that wouldn't normally happen. Also, from a visual perspective, looking at the overhead shots, the layout shows, firstly, how much the track width reduces from the entry on the left to the entry of the right, plus how sharp the right is compared to the left. Then, just over the rise of the mountain, the track has a slight kink to the right, all of which needs consideration while attempting to ride this tricky section. Leaving the chicane behind you, aim to keep the bike over to the right-hand side of the track, and even at this stage, start to look for your tip in reference. Because it's an upright approach, very heavy braking to start with, and ease off as you start to approach the start of the kerb. By the end of the white line, use this as your tip in reference, commit and start your tip in into the corner. The apex is a long way around the corner, in fact, almost at the end of the kerb itself. As you tip in, this can give you the feeling that you've either missed it or going to miss it. Don't apex early or you'll run wide at the exit and be totally out of position for the right. As you enter the mountain section, don't shift down to too low a gear. There's no point in trying to ride through, up and over the mountain with the engine revving too hard. It makes the throttle response very sensitive and to be honest you can't use all the power the bike has anyway. It's better to have a smooth, stable bike while negotiating the jump. After the tipping, focus on your late apex easing off the brakes by the time you reach the start of the kerb and aim to carry as much speed as possible into the corner as the incline will help to reduce your speed. As the end of the kerb comes into view, make sure you're as close to the white line as possible. This is a critical point as your track position now helps to open up the corner, allowing you to carry more speed into the mountain incline itself. From here, a rapid change of direction and start to accelerate into and through the corner. Looking towards the top of the rise, this is where the bike will be very light, either wheeling or possibly both wheels off the floor. Roughly halfway up the rise, this is where you'll feel the bike start to unload its weight off the suspension. Before that is the apex. Between the apex and the halfway point of the rise, you'll feel the bike get compressed as you run into the rise itself. This energy the suspension has absorbed then unloads just as the rise starts to ease off. Combine this with your speed and the effect is either a wheelie or a jump. The faster you're travelling, the bigger the jump. Now I would normally say only start to accelerate on or around the apex. But then you only have a very short time to build up any speed before you reach the point where the bike's trying to wheelie. If you start to accelerate from the white line, you can increase the amount of acceleration by the time you reach the wheelie point allowing you to carry more speed over the mountain itself. Up to the wheelie point you can accelerate as hard as you wish within reason. But as you built up the speed the bike is going to react in some way either by wheeling or by leaving the ground, jumping. This is the most crucial area and there's a golden rule if the bike's going to wheelie or jump. Generally keep the throttle open until the back wheel has left the floor. As the front wheel leaves the ground ease back without closing the throttle. The bike won't want to wheelie dramatically and you can control either the wheelie or the landing and then accelerate hard again. If you keep trying to accelerate then you have to react quickly by shutting the throttle causing the front wheel to slam down. If you're travelling quickly and both wheels leave the ground and you close the throttle before takeoff, the bike can come down landing on the front wheel, not a good thing to happen. Passing the apex run out using most of the track out towards the left kerb keep accelerating and aim to crest the rise about a third out in the track. 
if you crest the rise too far out to the left, you'll end up running off the track at the kink. If you crest slightly to the right, you can sit the bike up a little more, making the wheelie or the jump more controlled. You must, however, keep leaning to the right over the rise. If you straighten up too much, you'll end up running off the track. After the bike settles down after the jump or the wheelie, you can then resume your acceleration down towards hole bends. Get on board for just $5 a month to see my exclusive content. But if you like what I do, you can subscribe on higher tiers for greater rewards.